We appreciate you coming this morning. We certainly appreciate our visitors today. and uh, This day that we've set aside to, we've called it a family dedication. Got some folks that's going to come in just a little bit. And uh, the Lord has blessed us with some young folks that we're going to dedicate to the Lord. We appreciate that. Appreciate you coming here today as well. Uh, I want you to take your Bible and turn to the book of Psalms. We're going to be reading this morning from chapter number 127. So, Psalm 127, just going to be a reading about three verses this morning. Psalm 127, beginning in verse 3. When you find that, go ahead and stand to your feet as we honor the reading of God's Word together. Word of God says, Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is His reward. His heirs are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Father, it is good to be here this morning. We're thankful for this good number that's gathered to worship. And God, I I realize even as I stand before these people that I'm not worthy, Lord, to stand where I stand today. I too am a sinner, Lord, and I thank You so much for the blood of Jesus that cleanse us from all iniquity. I pray, God, this morning that You would help each of us to search our heart, that You would show us if there be any wicked way in us, God, that we could confess that. Because when we do, the Bible is pretty clear that You forgive us of that sin. God, we want to see, we want to feel, we want You to move today the way that You desire. We don't want anything to hinder this service. Help us to remember, Lord, there may be people here that's lost without the Lord Jesus Christ. And I, I pray, Father, that every believer now, uh, Lord, would just search his heart. We don't want anything to hinder in this service. And I, I pray, God, that uh, even as we present the Word of God and make our prayer unto You, that You would speak to the heart this morning. I can't save anybody. Lord, I couldn't save me. I had to come to You. And I'm so thankful that You made a way in Jesus. And I pray today, if there's one never received that salvation, You'd speak to their heart the words they need. Draw them by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, and show them today their need. And Father, I pray uh, that they might be saved even in our presence. Lord, I realize that there are folks in this big a number that are struggling with things that I don't know anything about. Or they may be having a hard time in their marriage. They may be having a hard time on the job or with finances. Maybe sickness has uh, enveloped them and their family. And God, maybe their sadness. They've lost a loved one. I pray that You would encourage, use Your Word today to do what I cannot. And Father, I pray for those that wanted to be here. Some are sick and shut in. God, I pray You'd lift them up where they are and encourage their hearts as well. Now help us. We thank You for Jesus and it's in His wonderful name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. As we look back at the Scripture this morning and thinking about a family dedication service and the Lord drew my attention to this Scripture and some maybe that you've heard preached about. I know that I have used this Scripture. Maybe not as a sole means of uh, a message, but certainly have referenced this uh, these verses on many occasions, and uh, certainly they have a great meaning to us uh, today. And we think about uh, dedicating our children to the Lord. The Bible's pretty clear about children. Sometimes we may not be so clear, but the Bible's pretty clear that children are a blessing from God. Verse number three said, "Lo, children are." An heritage. That literally means that that they are a, an inheritance that God has given unto us. Now, he says in verse number five, "Happy is the man." Now, uh, that word "happy is the man" could be translated "blessed," which actually would go further than saying "happy." It, it would probably be more like "happy." 
Happy is the man, who, you see, who has children. We, we know that children bring a great deal of, of meaning to our life. They bring a great deal of good into our life. The, and you see verse number 3 tells us of the profit of children. They're very profitable to you and I. We know that they're a blessing to a couple. I look out and see uh, young folk in the, uh, in the congregation and I think of what a blessing that these children are to you. And I wonder sometimes really if we understand what a blessing they are to us. I know uh, maybe you're much like me. My life began to change forever when we had children. And I, I think maybe life is never the same outside of that. Everything that you do from that moment on, you can't escape the fact that you're responsible for another life. That, uh, that, that God has indeed given you a gift. You see, children are profitable. They're, they're a blessing. I thought of that and I, and I flipped back over to 1 Samuel chapter number 1. And we won't go there for, for time, but there in 1 Samuel you'll find that Hannah prayed to God. and She prayed. Her, her womb was closed up and, and she prayed that God would give her a child. She prayed earnestly that God would bless her with a child. She went uh, every year at the time that they did sacrifice and poured out her heart unto God. So much so uh, that her lips moved but nobody around her could hear the sound. She was talking to God as she wept on the altar. She was crying out for a child. Her heart desired a child that she might give him. Or the Bible says to lend him to the Lord all the days of his life. I look back at that scripture and I've still got an outline there. Uh, Brother Adam, when, when uh, Tanner was dedicated to the Lord, that is the, the scripture that we read from back, uh, hard, hard as it is to believe, back in January of 2011. It seems like it was just a few days ago that we were discussing that. But uh, you, you see, children are definitely a prophet to a couple. They're, they're a blessing to a couple. We know that they're also a blessing to a church. I don't know about you today, but I think children are a blessing to a church. There, there are many churches today that don't have a good deal of children in them. I, I like to see a, a church full of all kinds and all sizes. I don't know about you, uh, but I, I like to see some young folks. I like to see some older folks and all there is in between. I think God really blesses that. And we have a good representation of that as you look throughout the church. God has blessed us with a good deal of not only younger folk, but older folk. I remember there was a lady uh, in our home church and I remember as plain as day, I, her name escapes me right now for some reason, but, but she told me one time she, she made about the best explanation uh, of folks and the way that we work in the church as I'd ever heard. She said in the church, she said, you need young people and you need the older people. She said, the young people put on the gas and the old people wouldn't know when to throw on the brakes. She said, it kind of it kind of works together, you know. And there's a lot of truth in that. There, there is a lot of truth in that. But young folk, they're a blessing. These children are a blessing, not a burden to a congregation. I, I love to see these little folks walking around. and I, I want you to know, parents, I don't mind the noise. If they, if they cry and they whine, listen, if they, if they get loud sometimes, I know you got to do what you got to do as a parent, but it doesn't bother me. I've got a microphone. I very seriously doubt the loudest one is going to get any louder than the preacher. But children are a blessing. Blessing from God. They they they're they're a blessing in the ministry. I, I've uh, said Brother Clint comes and counts some money on Sunday morning. Well, I'll pick on him. He's not in the room, but sometimes we we talk. He he a lot of times at first fifty cent or seventy five cent. He'll put a dollar in there and take that so he don't have to put the change up on the board. That it's just easier for him to do that. He likes round numbers, and I I said Clint, I don't like that. I said I like to see uh, you. Know, uh, 38 sin up there at some point. You know what that tells me when I see that 38 sin or that 78 sin? It tells me that there's kids that's giving 
in the church. It tells me that there's parents that are telling their kids it's important to give to church. That they're bringing a quarter or a nickel or a dime or a penny or two, but they're trying to teach them the ways of the Lord. And when I see that, that tells me that those kids are giving. Hopefully that's not you estimating your tithe going, well, I owe $78.26 this week. I hope that's not you. Maybe, <laughs> maybe that's those uh, kids, I believe it is. But you see, children are a blessing to, to a couple, to a church, and they're, they're also a, a blessing to the community. Children, I, I think about how, how much children are a blessing in our community. And you know, uh, the, there are several folks along with myself that, that work uh, uh, down at the nursing home. And, you see children come in now, now and I, I'll, uh, maybe I'll get on you just a little bit. A lot of times we don't have a lot of participation in our nursing home Sunday at 2 p.m. To be honest with you, that's a shame on us that no more people don't show up than they do. We ought to come and sing. We ought to come and visit. They enjoy seeing you. But the truth is, Brother Tyler, they'd rather see one kid than a hundred of me and you. Just that you, you could take a kid down that hall, one of these little toddlers, and walk them down there, and you'd just see those faces light up in that nursing home. The, uh, those little folks just love to see the kids come. What a, a blessing they are. I remember when we, we had a week of Bible school uh, right after we had our week of Bible school here, we had a week of Bible school there. And, uh, during that week, uh, I had several folks from the church involved in that. And we said, uh, I had council time with a little group of them one day, and there were some of the uh, older folks in there, and one lady was in her wheelchair. And I, I think you were in there at that time, Michelle, and there was a little girl that had crawled up in her lap in that wheelchair, two, three years old maybe, and had just gone to sleep. And that little precious lady was just uh, holding her right there. And you know how boring I am. That little girl went right to sleep. And, and she does have, but that was a blessing to her to be able to hold that child. That was probably her most favorite thing uh, that she did. And Lord only knows how long. But children are a blessing. I think we ought to get them involved in the ministry. It does my heart good to see kids involved in the ministry. When we had uh, the work day here yesterday, I saw some of the children over there working. Some of our children that when we first came here were just little bitty kids. And now, now now they're as big or bigger than mom and dad and they're over there digging in. They're over there. Uh, I, I saw some of them washing walls. Some of them doing uh, different things. Just It was a blessing to me. We ought to teach our children to work on behalf of the Lord. We ought to teach them to give to the Lord's work. We ought to teach them to go and tell other people about the work. That's one of the uh, greatest things I think maybe about growing up on a farm is everybody works together. And it don't matter matter how little you are, everybody had a responsibility when you grew up on the farm. And I, I think that's the way it ought to be in a church. I don't think kids ought to be standing around while adults are working. I believe they ought to be doing what they can. I love to see like next Sunday after homecoming, you'll, you'll see these young folks, some of them can't even hardly tote a chair, but they'll be dragging them across the floor to give them to somebody to put up on that rack. They'll be doing what they can. And I I don't know about you, but I, I greatly enjoy seeing that. That's training them to work for the Lord. Getting involved uh, with what God is doing. You see, children are a blessing. Children are a blessing to us. And we should never forget that. Not only do you find the profit of children here, but verse number 4 shows us the potential of children. Verse number 4 says this, As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of the youth. So, so we find that that children can be, uh, they can be like a tool. Did you know that? How many of you today are satisfied with the condition of the world that we live in? Not one hand goes up for that. Most of us are very unsatisfied with the current direction uh, of, uh, of this world and especially the, the, the country that we live in. We don't agree in many, in many ways of the direction that our nation has taken. Do you know one of the greatest things that you can do for your country is to train up your child 
in the way that he should go. He says there, as arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of the youth. How many of you have heard the expression, the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world? Have you ever heard that? If you want this world to change, you begin to train your children in the way that they should go. I tell you, if you we, we live in a good place. There's a lot of wickedness around, but where we live is one of the best places I believe that you could ever pick to live. I, I genuinely believe that if you want Johnson County, if you want Mountain City to stay conservative, if you want us to stand for biblical values, you continue to invest in children. You continue to share the gospel of Jesus, to reach them with the gospel and train them in the ways of the Lord. You see, children have a great potential to change this earth. Now, I began to think about that and all the things that God has done in the past. And I, I thought about the miracles that God did for Israel and the miracles that He's did for you, done for you and, and for me. And, and it seems like every time God did something in a mighty way, He raised up a child to accomplish that task. He raised up a child. I, I began to think about Israel, how, how that God knew that there was a famine that was going to come in the land and how, how that, that there was a child born and his name was Joseph. And Joseph loved the Lord and, and Joseph was mistreated by his brothers and, and, and Joseph was sent, sent away and sold as a slave and God put him down in Egypt and He put him there eventually in Pharaoh's house and he became the second greatest man in that part of the country and then, and then his brethren had to come down and God provided for Israel through Joseph. You see, God raises up children today. Not only Joseph, but I, I began to think about Moses. You, you think about Moses, you find a lot about the story of Moses and, and his brothers, his sisters. You, you find his mom and his dad. Uh, uh, you, you, as you look at his life, the Bible says that he was born at the time that he was born, that, that Pharaoh was having them to take the Israelite children, the men children, and cast them into the river. He wanted rid of them. He, he, didn't want, he didn't want them to be many in number. He was afraid of the Israelite people. But the Bible says that Moses' parents saw that he was a goodly child. And they disobeyed the commands of the Lord. They loved that child. And they saw him as a blessing. And God raised up a child through them that was undoubtedly trained in the way that he should go. And listen, when Moses became of age, he refused to live in the house of Pharaoh, but he chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God for a season. You, you see, he, he, he looked forward to that place that's built not with hands, but that home in heaven. And I thought about that, and I thought about when, when God... And this has been His plan. We can't just say God decided to redeem the world because it's always been His plan. But when God set His plan into action to redeem mankind, what did He do? He sent a child into the world. And He sent Jesus into the world. And that child holds great potential, holds great promise. And, and none of us know that the children that we're raising today, the time that we're putting into them, none of us know how God will use them. You see, we need to get these young folks to take a stand today. We, we know that, that a child has great potential if, he, if he's directed in the right way. The Bible teaches us that very clearly. Proverbs 22 says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. There, there might be a time when a child goes astray, even if he's trained in the right way. But I believe if he's trained in the right way, listen, he'll come back to the Lord. He'll come back to his training. Folks, there, 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 there are folks in here that's already raised their children. It's already even seen their grandchildren raised that can attest to you that that verse is true. 
They've seen their children maybe rebel against the Lord and they knew that child was raised, by, raised right. And, and there's been a time where they spent uh, months or, or maybe years praying for that child, but God brought them back. And they never gave up on that child. And you, you and I should never give up on the child. You see, the potential of children, if, if, they're, if they're directed right, they're like arrows in the hand of a mighty man. They accomplish the task that they're sent out to do if they're directed. You see, we've got to teach them the proper beliefs. We've got to train them in home. Even though we're dedicating families and children today, you cannot depend solely upon the church to train your child. You need to teach them. You need to show them. You need to model to them the Word of God. You need to teach them how to behave. The Bible says of Timothy, I'm going to read you three verses from Timothy. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 1.5, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois, and in thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. You see, Timothy's faith was handed down to him. And many of you in this room, you can attest to the fact that your faith has been handed down. What you believe has been handed down from mom and dad and maybe from grandma and grandpa and maybe further down the line. There has been a lineage of faith. Now, uh, 2 Timothy 3.15 says, And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. Not only did he have a godly mom, not only did Timothy have a, a godly grandmother, but they taught him the Word of God. They taught him God's Word. They ensured that he knew what he needed to know. And I don't know everything about Timothy's life, but I do know this. Apparently it was some time in his early adulthood that he came to know the Lord because Paul said this, unto Timothy, mine own son, in the faith. So it seems that... that that, that Paul had begotten him in the faith, but he, he may have led him to Jesus, but I'll tell you right now, the legwork began with mom and dad. The legwork began with grandma. They taught him the Word of God, and they gave him a lineage or, or a legacy of faith. And listen, I will to tell you, the, the preacher, Brother Tyler, brother, or, or, or myself, or maybe one of the Iwana leaders, we may get an opportunity to lead your child to Christ. And that, that's great. But the truth is, it begins with you. You, you teach that child at home. You, you pray for that child at home and teach them the importance of drawing near to God. Not only do, do we direct them through, through coaching them, but we also direct our children through correcting them as well. We have to correct children from time to time. And we understand... What that means, some of you may be new to this church. I just put it plain, and we still believe in whooping the young around here every time, every time that he needs. Amen. I don't see anything wrong with that. God put a good old soft spot right back here, right. And, and I think it's all right to use that. And I don't think anybody would look down on you if you was to take a young and right outside here and use that little soft spot if he needed it. You, you see, we're to correct them real quickly. I won't dwell on this, but uh, the Bible's pretty, uh, pretty clear on that. Uh, that in, in, foolish, in, in Proverbs 22, it says, Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Proverbs 13 says, He that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth him betimes. Proverbs 23 says, We withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him, he shall not. Die. How about that? If thou be, and you say, Lord, how could I whoop that little young? How could I? I, I we, we, we maybe had that attitude for a while. I think um, Bailey made it home from the hospital before she got her first whipping, but Cole didn't. Um, but I, I, I think we should correct them, teach them. You know, I'm not talking about just whipping a child, but we correct them by teaching them the right behavior. We, we teach them how to live and how to behave. You know, and, and sometimes parents, sometimes in church, I've had people say, well, well preacher, I, I just I cannot control them and I, 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 I'm embarrassed to bring them. Listen, the truth is, everybody that's got a child, they know what that's like. To have to train a child 
in church and have to take them outside and make a little adjustment here and there and maybe have to hear some whining and com complaining along the way. You do what you have to. We all go through that. And listen, we understand that. We may not have little kids anymore, but I, I think folks understand that. And, and, and listen, if, you, if there's anybody here that don't understand that, shame on you. You ought to. You ought not be looking down on them because of that. Listen, you, you, you bring that child to church. If he needs to go outside and get corrected, then go out there, wear him out, and bring him back here and set him back down. And even if he's, even if he's got the snubs, let him sit there. He'll get over it after a while. And he'll learn that he's not going to go out there and get away with his uh, bad behavior. We've got to teach them the right behavior. We've got to teach them uh, respect for the house of God as well. Children have to be taught that. When you, when you find young folks many times, maybe they, they come in on the van and they, they've never really been to church with their parents, they, they don't know. They, they don't understand how they're expected to behave. Sometimes we have to, we have to tell children. If there's children around you, when there's a congregational hymn being sung, Tell that child to get up off his rear end and stand up. He's in the house of God. And that's an issue of respect. My child will not sit there on, on his behind while we're singing to the Lord. He needs to get up. We need to understand that. We need to encourage that. As we, that's part of worshiping together. Now, I don't know about you. I look around sometimes and I, I see things. But when our children were young, and they were not allowed to put their feet on the pews in the, in the house of God. I don't like that. I think it's disrespectful. With that being said, you've got to train them. They, they don't know that until we tell them. So well, there has to be some allowance made for that. I'll tell them in church. Or I'll tell them in a one. If you won't call them down, I will. I'll go by and say, hey boy, get your feet off that pew. That, that belongs to the Lord. Listen, that, we need to teach them that, that reverence. We're, we're losing a lot of that today in society. We're, we're losing a lot of that. But children have potential. We, we've got to... Uh, teach them. We've got to coach them. We've got to correct them if need be. We, 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 but the truth is, even as he said, as arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are the children of, thy, or, of, of the youth. Listen, it's not just the potential of the child. It's not just the direction of the child, but it's also the discipline of the parent. How do we direct them? How do we coach them? How do we correct them? Well, parents, we've got to show some discipline. We, we, we've, got to, we've got to take care of our own problems. We, we've got to set the example. He said his arrows are in the hand of a, a, a mighty man. Listen, I, I'm not much. I've got a crossbow that I can shoot pretty good. I'm not much with a, a, a regular bow and arrow. But, that, you know, I, I probably couldn't tie. It, it'd take me a little while to get back in practice. It's been so long. I, I probably couldn't hit too good with that. But there are guys in here that love to do that. Eric or Kevin, some of these guys that do that on a regular basis, they know how to hit the target because they practiced at that. They can do well at that. And listen, parents, we follow that same example as ours are in the hand of a mighty man. We need to be that mighty man. We need to direct our children. We need to be disciplined and set the example for them. A lot of times the reason children don't know how to behave is because the parents don't know how to behave either. I tell you, it's getting worse and worse. I don't know what's going to happen. Well, I ain't going to say that, but it's getting worse, I'll just tell you. The potential of children. You, you see not only that, but lastly, uh, verse number 5 shows us the power of children. We see they've got a great deal of potential. We see that they're, they're, they're very profitable for us, but you find in verse number five the, the power of children. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. I thought about that, and children have the, the power to bring happiness in life. Have you ever seen a family, maybe your family has been through this, where every child in the family has kind of grown up and then for a while there's, there's no kids. And then all of a sudden there's a child born and son, it changes everything. And have you seen that before? Uh, and it, it's just amazing how much joy that a child can, can put into a family. It, it's amazing how much happiness 
that you have. How much more fun uh, sharing Thanksgiving, Christmas, uh, Easter time, all these birthdays. It, it, it's just amazing how happy, how much happiness that a child can bring to your life. I thought about uh, Jacob and Joseph, how the, the, the Bible says that, that he loved Joseph so much, he made him that coat of many colors. He was so proud of his son. He, he loved him so much. And I, I thought of what Jesse must have thought about when, when Samuel came and said that there was a king among his sons. You, can you imagine what he thought about? How happy that he was to find out that his youngest son was going to be the king, that God had His hand upon him and He brought happiness to his life. And I, I'll tell you what, children, I, I don't think there's... Every parent in here, there's nothing you could do to make them more happy than you following the Lord. Than you taking the, the right step and following God and doing what God has called you to do. We want our children to succeed, don't we? We want our children to do well. I, I, I remember... Uh, Brother Joel, and, and, and there, there are times that he, he wouldn't say it, but you could just tell how proud that Brother Joel was when he was around Sam, that God had made Sam a preacher. And you could just, he didn't have to say it. You could tell how, how much pride that he had because, because his, his grandson had turned out to be such a good man and that God had used him in such a mighty way. And you know, he's just one example. There, there are so many others that it brought so much happiness to their moms, to their, to their dads, to their grandparents. Uh, uh, the Bible says in Proverbs 17, listen to this, many of you identify with this well, children's children are the crown of old men and the glory of children are their fathers. Children's children are the crown of old men. You see, they, they bring happiness to the family. Children also bring happiness to the flock. If you... As you see these little kids, and I mentioned that offhandedly uh, just a minute ago, I, I, I know that you know children sometimes, especially folks, uh, children that are not church, sometimes they uh, abuse the property, sometimes they don't know about how to behave, but I'll tell you what Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me. You have to permit children to come to Christ. Take every step possible to bring them to Jesus. Chances are, if your child is ever going to know Christ as their Savior, it'll be before they're 12 years of age. The chances are very slim after that time. It's so important that you set the right example, that you teach them right when they're just little children. Are you setting the right example for your family today? Do you know Jesus as your Savior? You can't send the kid to church and let him go with mama, dads, and expect everything to be okay. It might be alright for a little while. But then when he gets a little older, it's going to be monkey see, monkey do. Uh, if, if the Lord Jesus Christ is not very important to you, he's probably not going to be very important to your kids. And it follows that probably more than likely not very important to your grandchildren either. Do you know Jesus is your Savior today? Let's pray together.